Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, uh, I'm Mark Schlissel, University President, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Leaders and Best panel. Uh, our, our families, uh, students who are here with us today, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your engagement with the University of Michigan. Our new first year uh, students and our transfer students are from all across the United States and all around the world. We're once again expecting a spectacular class of top students who persevered through really difficult times the last year. I know that most of you feel like you lost much of your senior year and all those special experiences you worked so hard for. My heart goes out to you and to your families. I hope you're all safe and healthy uh, along with your loved ones. But there truly are better days ahead. And we're here to talk about what you can expect in the fall and answer as many of your questions as we can. It's very natural, even during a normal year, to be full of questions at this stage uh, in the admission cycle. If you haven't made your college decision yet, we hope all of you choose to come to the University of Michigan. You'll get an outstanding education, meet classmates, will become lifelong friends, benefit from our great environment and all the activities Ann Arbor holds, and graduate as a member of one of the largest and strongest alumni communities in the world. A few housekeeping uh, uh, notes. Uh, we'll have uh, live captioning and ASL translation available throughout uh, this uh, meeting. And the recording of this meeting will be posted later today for friends or family that weren't able to join us now. Uh, we'll be going through about 5.45 this afternoon here on the East, Co East Coast time. Uh, we've collected many questions in advance and you could ask questions also using the Q&A function in Zoom. Uh, I'd like to introduce the folks joining me today. We have Provost Susan Collins. She's the Chief Academic Officer for the University and we'll talk about classes this fall. We're also joined by Vice President for Student Life, Martino Harmon, who will talk about some of the activities and experiences we're planning to support our students. And finally, Chief Health Officer Preeti Malani, who's a physician and a Michigan parent and an alumna. Uh, she'll be moderating our Q&A today as well. Before I turn things over to Provost Collins, I want you to know that we take very seriously our responsibility to care for our students' health, and their intellectual and social development. Uh, I'm a physician, actually an immunologist, uh, whose uh, skill set has really come to the fore here in the pandemic. Uh, but I'm also a parent and a grandparent. And my wife and I sent four kids off to college, and we know how many of the parents in this group today uh, feel. I know that mix of pride and trepidation that accompanies sending a child off to college. We promise we'll take great care of your kids as they traverse this pathway to independence and adulthood. One way we've responded to the pandemic that I'm very proud of has been finding ways to help ease the financial burdens of our students and their families. The university received about $12.6 million in a first round of federal funding this school year for emergency grants for students who faced COVID-related expenses, such as housing, travel, and technology needs. We knew that funding wouldn't be enough, so the university stepped up to meet additional need providing more than 5.5 million in university aid to help our students in this unprecedented time. The university has received a second round of federal relief and we aim to once again go well beyond what we've been allotted to make sure our students can focus more on their education and less on financial emergencies. It's really exciting looking forward to the fall coming out of the pandemic and it looks much more like a traditional residential campus experience is in store for our students. Uh, we pledge to keep in touch. Uh, please, students, sign up for the UMish Students Facebook group. There's lots of great information there. And there's also a UMish Parents Facebook group uh, that I invite parents to join. Also, we ask parents to sign up for the Family Matters newsletter. So without further ado, I'll turn things over to Provost Collins. Wonderful. Thank you very much, President Sissel. Just delighted to be here with all of you. Um, and I just want to begin by saying how thrilled I am to welcome the incoming class to the University of Michigan both this summer and this fall. We are really looking forward to a much more normal year for 21-22, as President Sissel has just described. So our planning for the coming year is based on the advice of faculty from medicine and public health, experts who are advising the state of Michigan and guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and uh, Disease Control. And our experiences over the past year have also really informed all of our decisions. Students and faculty have adhered to public health measures to help stop 
the spread. And as a result, we did not see transmission in our classrooms, in our research labs, and that really positions us well in terms of uh, where we're going for the fall. So the experience of faculty members across campus has really uh, been very important for how we've developed our plans. Um, the plan for the fall has a very high percentage of classes that are taught in person, including most medium and small classes, such as discussion sections and seminars. Um, those classes that will be taught remotely are primarily the larger lectures and classes. Our approach, as I've mentioned, is driven by public health requirements, but also the pedagogical needs of each course with decisions in the course format being made by the unit levels that are really familiar with the key things that are involved in those classes. And so that means that the people who are most knowledgeable about the effective ways to present classes are determining the ways that they will be taught. Um, I also wanted to share some of what we've learned about presenting classes over the past year. We know, as I'm sure that you do as well, that online formats do not allow for the engaged conversation and debates and the, uh, those things that are really critical parts of a Michigan education. And so we're prioritizing those smaller groups for the in-person meetings. And large lectures can take advantage of the more formal types of interaction, chat boxes and a variety of other things as well. An important finding from the past year uh, those are things that we'll continue to engage. Um, and so, for example, virtual office hours, we want to make sure that student access to our faculty as, is as engaged and as expansive as possible. And doing that in a combination of virtual formats as well as in person has worked really well. And of course, we'll continue to do those things. Um, we've also learned how strong and resilient our students are. And we're so proud of Michigan students and the community that our new classes will be, um, will be uh, developing and will be joining. Um, the study groups and um, the recreational facilities and the kind of active engagements outside of classes continue to be and will increasingly be a very important part of that experience. This will, has been a very welcoming and engaged community and will be considerably more so as we look forward to the fall with a vibrant residential experience. And we're very excited about all that we have planned. And so now it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Martino Harmon, who is Vice President for Student Life. Thank you very much, Provost Collins, and welcome. Good afternoon. I am so excited to welcome you to the University of Michigan. We're already preparing for a great Michigan experience for you this fall. I wanna share some details about the fall 2021 planning. We know that your experiences this past year, many of you as high school seniors or students transferring from other universities has likely been a little different. Um, maybe without many opportunities to spend time uh, with, in person with friends. That's why we're determined to provide as many safe in-person activities for you as possible this fall. We want to help you find Michigan in a way that tailors the Michigan experience to your interests and your needs. If you prefer or need to engage with campus in a hybrid way this fall, we'll also continue to leverage online tools and resources that we've created to enhance the student experience throughout the pandemic. Of course, our fall plans for fall 21 depend on public health guidance and restrictions from state and local authorities that may be in place at the time to keep us safe but we remain optimistic at this point that we'll have a great residential fall. And should we all, and, and I'm sorry, and we should all expect that some public health restrictions like wearing face coverings and social distancing may be necessary. We're thrilled to offer resources like staff who will reach out to students one-on-one -on -one to check in, groups and buddy matchups for you and fellow students who are, that can connect with you who are in similar tracks. We want to connect you with students of shared interest, and we also will share weekly communications about opportunities to connect on campus and online. We can't wait to welcome you to campus. And now I'll turn things over to Dr. Milan. Thank you, Martino. So I'm just going to add my quick congratulations to all of you and your families. As you heard, I am a current Michigan parent. My son is a third-year student in the College of Engineering, and 
And I'm also a Michigan graduate. And for me, attending Michigan really helped set me up for success. And what I learned went way beyond the classroom. I really learned how to advocate for myself and others. I learned the importance of community. I learned to be resourceful and resilient, which really helped me this past year. But more than anything, I learned the power of my voice. And I also learned how to not take no for an answer. And I'm sure the president can attest to my persistence. You know, even today, when I walk around campus, I really feel the same way, the same excitement I did when I was 18 years old. Being at Michigan, it, it allows you to be anything and do anything. So I hope that you'll find ways to make uh, Michigan your own, to make it, you know, and to really contribute to our community. Uh, let's talk briefly about health. You know, this past year, it's been all about COVID, understandably. And on campus, we have really had to recreate the experience in a lot of ways. And the Mason Blueprint site has all kinds of details and everything related to COVID. Uh, as I, I mentioned, we have had to really build that public health infrastructure. And there are details there on everything from quarantine and testing and all the metrics that we follow to monitor campus. And then my favorite topic, vaccines. And I'll just take a moment here to say, if you haven't done so, please make plans to get vaccinated. I know some of you may be joining us internationally and. Um, Access may be a, lim a bit limited in some states, but make plans. And as soon as you're eligible to be vaccinated, please do that. Vaccination doesn't just protect you, it protects everyone around you. And the success of our fall plans really depend on the community being highly vaccinated. I often say COVID is not the only risk to your health. And at Michigan, we take a broad approach to well being, not just physical health, but your emotional health, your social health, your academic health. Every domain of well being is important, and that balance between those different aspects is going to shift over time. And I really hope you'll use the next four years or beyond as a time to really engage with your health, to, to make good decisions. That's what I tell my kids every day make good decisions. You know, learn how to make an appointment, how to refill your prescriptions, decide when you should seek care. The team at the health service is here to help you thrive. Uh, you'll be getting lots more information in the coming weeks and months, especially if you have complex health issues. You know, I'm just going to end by saying, you know, maybe this hasn't been the awesome senior year that you deserve, but I'm optimistic that the fall is going to look and feel different and it's going to feel much closer to a typical fall semester. And uh, with that, we have a lot of questions that have been previously uh, submitted to President Schlissel. So we'll begin with those and uh, we'll get through as many of these as we can. So I'm going to start with a couple for uh, President Schlissel. Our students were going back to in-person learning this fall required to be vaccinated before going back to campus? You know, we're actually involved in discussions right now about that point, uh, but regardless of where we land, uh, it's incredibly important to every single person uh, who uh, comes to be a student and also our faculty and staff be vaccinated. The vaccines are safe. They're as effective as any vaccines out there. They're spectacular. The supply is increasing all around the country, you know, here in Michigan, uh, our medical center has already vaccinated and uh, delivered 100,000 doses of vaccine. Uh, so please get vaccinated. Uh, we'll let you know shortly what the nature of requirements will be, but regardless of whether it's required, uh, it's the smartest thing you could possibly do. It works uh, really on everybody. There are very few, if any, medical exceptions to who should be vaccinated. Uh, so please, you know, as uh, Dr. Milani said, come up with a game plan. Get yourself vaccinated as soon as possible. Protect yourself, protect your family, but also elevate the experience uh, here on campus. Uh, you know, I'm predicting the vast majority of our students will be vaccinated. And the closer we get to everyone being vaccinated, the more normal the fall semester will be. So everyone can play a role in this. Great. Um, you're, you're, you're speaking my language. <laughs> so yes, please go get vaccinated. Um, speaking of the fall, how accessible will sporting events be for students? Will I be able to attend events? Yeah, I surely hope so. Right now, we're planning to have spectators uh, attend sporting events. So in the big house, in the Chrysler uh, arena. Uh, so, you know, the answer is yes, depending upon state guidance at the time. Uh, I could imagine a circumstance where if you want to attend an event with a large number of people, we're going to ask you to be vaccinated. So that's yet another reason to get vaccination out of the way. Yeah, and, and already we're, we're starting to change requirements around quarantine and, and soon testing with vaccination. So there are other bonuses. Wonderful. I'll take the next slide and we'll have some questions for uh, Provost Collins. 
So will orientation be virtual? Uh, yes, orientation for the summer and fall terms will uh, be virtual. That actually allows us to offer the same experience for all students and uh, is consistent with public health circumstances, which of course could change. So once uh, you've paid an enrollment deposit, you would receive an email either this month or in May, depending on which term you would start. And that'll have instructions on how to complete the Wolverine online orientation and, um, and then follow up from there. So please be sure to set up and then regularly check the UMich email account. Um, that is uh, where you would get information about that and, and other things as well. Uh, and so um, again, the general information about um, orientation is available on the Office of New Student Programs website. So if there are any additional questions, that uh, is a good resource uh, to keep in mind. Great. And what are the undergraduate research opportunities like at Michigan and how can I get involved? Um, I love that question. So engaging in research as an undergraduate is such a fabulous experience and way to learn and to expand uh, understandings in so many different ways. And Michigan actually has lots of research opportunities for undergraduates, including for freshmen. This includes everything from work in labs to working with community partners throughout Southeast Michigan to opportunities in our museums and our archives. One of our largest programs is the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, which is known as Europe. And it's a nationally recognized model for engaging students in research and various types of creative activities. And it's really designed to serve first and second year students specifically, as well as transfer students. So if you search for Europe events on our site, you'll actually find information about the annual Europe showcase of projects, which is coming up. It's gonna be held virtually this year on April 22nd and um, is uh, kind of easily accessed. And it's gonna showcase the work of more than a thousand Michigan undergraduates who involved themselves in Europe this past year. And that'll really give you a sense of the range of different types of research that our students are involved with. So the Europe program is one really important way that students can get involved in research opportunities. Another way to find opportunities is to ask faculty members, to ask graduate student instructors who lead discussion sections, and other students are also a great resource, particularly returning students, because many of them will have had research experiences already. You can also engage in research with various student organizations, and they span all kinds of fields from solar cars, and we have national, nine national championships in solar cars, to journalism at the Michigan Daily. And uh, alumni of the Michigan Daily have actually uh, nine Pulitzer Prize recipients among them. So as I said at the outset, there's a wide range of opportunities to get involved in research as an undergraduate, including as a freshman at the University of Michigan. Yeah, and I'll just add that I think anyone who's interested in research, there are opportunities. And in fact, even during the pandemic, these opportunities grew. and. Um, in our residence halls, we have a community that is devoted to research also in one of the residence halls. And we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit more about that. So, you know, research is, is in lots, it looks lots of different uh, ways and it's, it's there everywhere. So that's good. It's exciting. I, I really encourage our students to become involved in research uh, starting in their freshman year. How do we know which classes are remote or in person? So uh, j just to, to kind of focus on that one, the university really puts so much value on our residential education, especially opportunities for the interaction among our faculty and our students um, and among students themselves. That's just an important part of being together on campus and a critical part of preparing students for lifelong learning. Um, and so the plans that we have uh, for the fall really are intended to provide high levels of in-person learning and engagement for our students. And we're excited to be planning for a much more engaged in-person experience. So centralized information for all of our classes is available on the registrar's office site. And um, the categories there describe information about um, the, the class modality. So for example, a class that has a notation of P would be an in-person class. 
And you'll see that for some classes, they are paired, they have a lecture and a lab or discussion sections, and there are often going to be different modes or formats indicated for different parts of the class. So the, the registrar's office site really is uh, the best place there. As I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of our undergraduate courses are being offered in person and decisions about course format are being made at the department and school and college level to ensure that they're being taught uh, in pedagogically effective ways. And again, most of the smaller and medium-sized classes will be in person with most of the larger lectures uh, remaining remote. And we are going to continue to accommodate needs such as for our international students who may be unable to travel to Michigan by continuing to provide hybrid and remote options in particular uh, for those students and, and for others. Um, and so again, like our students, our faculty members are very eager to return to an in-person in -person learning experience, recognizing the value of those interactions that occur in the classroom and that we can do so safely. Yeah, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to that. Some of you I know have not been in a classroom for more than a year, so that, that'll be a, a, a wonderful start to the fall. Uh, speaking of classes, uh, how easy is it to change majors at Michigan and what is the process? Sure, so, so let me say just a bit about majors first and then about changing. Generally, students don't choose a major until the second semester of their sophomore year. That gives them time to explore different fields and, and really make an informed choice. And it's important to consult along the way an academic advisor and to do so regularly and be sure that you understand what the requirements for the school and college are, what the requirements for the major are, so that you can make steady progress along the way, but also uh, really make an informed choice. So each school and college has its own academic advising website, and those have lots of information that would be helpful for a student who's in a particular major and is interested in considering making a choice switching their major. If you're changing majors within a school, say from history to philosophy and LSNA, just to give one example, you'd need to meet with an academic advisor in the proposed new major um, and to kind of under, make sure that you understand what would be required and um, what the implications would be to continue making progress towards the degree. It is a bit more complicated to change majors by going from one school or college to another. And again, the process there would involve talking with an academic advisor in the new school to determine what requirements would already have been met, which ones would still have to be met, and what the impact would be of a switch on the course programming and the time to degree. But again, we recognize that um, students sometimes do have a, a change of, of mind or learn about new areas that they're very excited about. And so it's certainly that there are absolutely possibilities to switch and talking through with academic advisors is a key part of making that decision and of moving forward. Great, we're gonna move on next to uh, Vice President Harmon to talk about some student life questions. So Martino, are all first year students guaranteed housing in dorms? And I've, I've, I see this questions come up in the Q&A also. I am really, really excited, uh, Preeti, to say yes. All incoming students who complete the enrollment processes will be guaranteed housing in our um, university housing for this fall. Um, after um, the university receives your enrollment deposit, we'll send you an email with a link to the Michigan housing application. We've actually started sending links to matriculated students um, starting April 6th. But if you submitted your enrollment deposit and you wait about three weeks and you haven't received an email, please contact us. You can send us an email at housing at umich.edu. That's housing at umich.edu and have your UMID number and we'll get things sorted out. But you should receive that within at least a few weeks after you submitted your deposit. Then at that point, um, you'll have until May 5th to return your housing application to us. Applications received by May 5th are randomized for eventual housing assignments. After May 5th, applications will be assigned on a first come, first serve basis. Application preferences are not guaranteed, 
but I do recommend you submit before May 5th to have a better chance of us being able to assign you to um, the location that you prefer. Once your contract is ready for review, you'll receive an email uh, and you'll have three days to review it and we'll be sending contracts out throughout June and August. Housing will follow up in mid-August with a lot of information, uh, details such as roommate information, room dimensions, and move-in information. And actually move-in information will be available a little sooner on the uh, housing website. I know this is a lot of information, a lot of processes, and you may not remember all of it, and that's okay. Um, what I would encourage you to do is one, don't worry. If you have questions, please regularly refer to the housing website, and that's housing.umich.edu, or send us a message at housing at umich.edu. Again, that website is housing.umich.edu, and the email address is housing at umich.edu. And we'll be glad to walk you through all the steps. Yeah, and it'll be nice, not just the classrooms are gonna look different with more people in class, but the res halls are also gonna look different. I and mean, this past year, it was really complicated because you know, this is all about togetherness and we, we had to actually have people separated and socially distanced. So I think life in the residence halls is gonna look a lot more like uh, normal. And I think uh, all of you are gonna have a great time there and meet lots of new people. Absolutely. Uh, what kind of mental health resources are available for students? So this is a very, very important topic. And it's something that the university is very focused on even before the pandemic, obviously. We have a wide variety of resources available and we're broadening our approach to help support student wellness in a range of comprehensive, comprehensive holistic and preventive ways. Our focus is on supporting the whole student rather um, with a variety of approaches that address mental health and well being along a continuum of different needs. So, we wanna meet students where they are. We wanna prevent um, concerns and issues that they may be having, but we wanna be able to address them when they have them. So, we have counseling and psychological services, which you'll hear us call CAPS, uh, and, and they offer individual and group counseling, crisis support, and outreach with professional counselors in person or in a virtual setting, which a lot of students have. Uh, told us that they like uh, during a pandemic. Wolverine Wellness, I want to really put in a plug for that, that office. They offer individual and group coaching on a variety of well-being topics, such as relationships, sleep, critically important, academic and stress management, and eating and body issues. Those are the issues that cause stress and result in counseling, and Wolverine Wellness can help before uh, counseling is needed. Exercise plays a critical role in your mental health. So you can take advantage of recreation sports to sign up for Zumba, kickboxing, intramural club sports, and lots of other ways to get your blood pumping between classes. So for more ways uh, that we can support your wellness throughout graduation, please check out wellbeing.studentlife.umich.edu. Again, that's wellbeing.studentlife.umich.edu. And you can just Google search us and you can find that information if you didn't get that. I'm, I'm just going to add a plug in for the University Health Service. Uh, this is such a committed group of clinicians and they have been there all day, every day during the pandemic, taking care of students who've needed care, uh, physical care, emotional care, academic care, you know, connecting back to the classrooms. And uh, they, are, they are all about supporting college students. Uh, they're very focused on that, very skilled. Uh, so I... I Again, they have a number of psychiatrists on their staff uh, for people who need uh, that type of care. And you know, for students who are coming in who have a, an established relationship either with a, a therapist or another clinician, uh, a counselor, uh, this is something to think about and plan for. And when you have orientation, you'll get a little more information on this. Uh, CAPS and these other resources are there for you. But if, if you need something that's gonna be more intensive or long-term, uh, there, there are other ways to get that kind of care, either locally or now with things being uh, so fluid in terms of remote access, that may be a good way to go. But uh, the team will be happy to help answer specific questions and support you on that. Uh, so in-person dining, I read that in-person dining will require students to first make a reservation. How will this operate? So, uh Preeti, I want to put in another plug for the importance of vaccines. I know we've talked about that, but that's critically important 
because it, it will give us the really encouraging signs regarding herd immunity and when we can reach that this fall. And that really plays into more options with dining. Right now though, we anticipate a reservation system that will allow us uh, to offer in-person dining on a rotation basis by halls and, and into various dining units. Of course, students can always uh, utilize the to-go option, but we definitely wanna open up the in-person dining and vaccination is critically important. Right now, currently in dining, they're in the process of exploring different processes, different ways to offer dining in person and to go like we have been doing this past year. And, and we'll be prepared for fall 21. And we'll continue, as I said, to make the grab and go available for students who wish to eat in their rooms or outside on the grass with other friends or even under the canopies, which we have across campus. So both options will be available and we're, we're planning for that right now. Yeah, you know, I, it's just funny when we think about dining and I, and I can't help but reflect on a year ago when we were trying to think about the fall, which seemed really impossible to even think about the fall. Uh, we just didn't know what to expect. And although the initial, initial shutdown was like a, a switch, it's really been a dial. And we're getting to the point where we're almost ready to dial up in a good way. Um, and vaccination is going to help us get there. Now, obviously, those of you who are not from Michigan, uh, we're having trouble in our state right now, although Ann Arbor itself has been pretty good, but we're having a lot of difficulty. So you know, I'm really hopeful that the, the residential dining uh, aspects will, will look different. Um, how will U of M foster an environment for student, new students to make friends even with COVID? So we've had a lot of opportunities to learn and develop our ways to help students find community and to engage during the pandemic. And those lessons will carry forward in the future in really new ways, new innovations. But we'll offer in-person and virtual programs and events so that students can take advantage of these resources in a variety of formats based on their own choices and their own comfort level. Our first year experience programming was a big hit with new students and also transfer students especially in terms of community meetups and theme programming that focus on everything from uh, watching horror movies together or talking about sustainability. Another key part of, of the Michigan experience could be our residence hall programs. So whether it's uh, living learning communities based on a range of different themes and interests or just in general programs that are available to all students. You don't feel overwhelmed by all of these offerings. There's so many different things to do and so many different opportunities. Just get in touch with us um, and you can get more information. I know I'm giving you a lot of different information points, but it's important. You can get more information at assist, uh, hashtag me at umich.edu and we'll help you get connected with the right resources. Again, many different opportunities. And once you really get involved and get connected, will help guide you through those processes. Yeah, I just want to make a, a comment on this too, because it, you know, there's, a, there's a certain bigness at Michigan that uh, it's great, but it's also not great. And I think uh, everyone kind of feels the same in terms of like everyone wants to make friends. And I think you have to sort of put yourself out there sometimes, even if it's a little uncomfortable. And I know this year has been really difficult for some students and you know, loneliness and isolation, surprisingly, is actually very common in college campuses. I, it surprised me. Maybe it doesn't surprise the incoming students, but it, it did surprise me um, when I learned about it a few years ago. And COVID has made it a lot worse. So I would just say, this is one of these things that, at, especially after the last year and a half, you know, get out there and, and try things and, and, and just say hello to folks. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to eat with them in the dining hall and stuff. So- And Dr. Bellani, I need to make a quick clarification. Yeah. When I talked about um, housing being guaranteed, I probably used the word incoming. What I really should have said is all first year students. So I just wanted to make that clarification. That was a question that, that came up. Okay, good. That's an important clarification. And um, we're gonna, we have some additional questions that I'm gonna start reading through and we'll bring everyone back on. Uh, Okay, um, so let me, let's, let's try uh, this question for Provost Collins. I've read that in the fall 2021 semester, all large lectures will be held remotely. With the vaccine rollout, I'm hoping these lectures can be in person as they're a critical part of the student experience. 
Can you address this? Sure. So um, it is it is true that most of the large lectures are held uh, are planned to be held remotely. As I mentioned before, we're planning flexibly, and so if things as we all hope, continue and improve, in particular if the vaccination um, is uh, you know, a significant number. Um, and again, that the details would have to, to get worked out. Um, so if conditions enable us to do more in person safely with under the various guidelines, then we would increase the number of in-person class experiences, including for some of our larger lectures. So the details, of course, would have to get worked out, but our planning is flexible to enable us to do that if conditions permit. And I also wanted to add my uh, strong encouragement to all of you, when vaccine is available to you, please do get vaccinated because the more members of our community, the more students who are vaccinated, the more likely it will be that we'll be able to move to a context in which even the large lectures are able to be held in person. And let me make one point, uh, Preeti, about large lectures. So you know, I've taught large lectures in biology uh, at a big public university. Uh, and it turns out not everybody learns great sitting with 300 classmates shoulder to shoulder. You really can't interact very much with the professor. And if anything, large lectures lend themselves very well to being delivered online. And then we use that time to have um, a small group uh, components of a larger class. So discussion sections, office hours, teaching labs. Uh, so just because the lecture component isn't in person, that doesn't mean there aren't in-person aspects to some of these larger classes. Absolutely. Great. Uh, Martino, a question that I'm going to uh, pose to you. Will intramural and club sports be offered in the fall? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. They will be offered. And, you know, it is our hope that it'll be a more normal version of recreation and club sports. Again, you know, really focusing on high vaccination rates. Uh, we were able to make some adjustments even this year to offer um, some of those activities, but we're hoping to open those up even more. And we'll, of course, follow health measures um, by um, pub, uh, state and also public health guidance. But it is our goal to make it a more normal recreation sports and intramural experience. You know, one thing we've learned this year is you really have to be flexible. It's very hard to predict what's going to happen next week and next month in September. Uh, but, you know, my crystal ball says that September is going to be the beginning of a transition you know, back to a new normal at college campuses all around the country. The beginning of the semester, you know, we may still require masks, certainly indoors, uh, groups that are smaller than normal. But as the semester proceeds, and if most everybody is vaccinated, and if our surveillance testing shows very little disease, by the end of the semester, it'll look just like the college uh, experience that we all uh, aspire to deliver. So you've got to hang in there with us. Uh, all schools are going through the same thing. Everybody's trying to figure out how to be uh, as normal as possible in their experience, as safe as possible, and as flexible as possible. Well, that, that uh, is a great uh, backdrop to the next question, which is what happens if there's a resurgence of COVID in the fall? And you know, I can just start this and then uh, toss it over to President Schlissel, who has been very deep in, in all of this with us. Um, you know, we, we actually had this happen a couple of times, and I think it depends on what it looks like. And with vaccination, the landscape could look very different, but basically if we need to, we adjust. It might mean people stay home for a few days. It might mean that classes go remote. It might mean that we send people home. I don't think any of those things are gonna happen because the fall should be better, but we've done this. We have had practice doing this and we have a really good group of people as well as our local public health uh, department. And I think, there's such close monitoring of things that we can react and pivot and change. And you know, I, Mark, if you have comments on this. Yeah, you know, the only thing I'll add is, you know, we share a campus with one of the great academic medical centers in the United States. So literally down the street from where your students will be living and studying uh, is a thousand bed hospital with spectacular physicians. So, so although we do not anticipate the high numbers of COVID cases that we went through this year, uh, if they are, if there are lots of cases, we have lots of doctors, we're ready. 
Um, uh, fortunately, although many students got infected uh, during the course of the year, I think we had a total of four hospitalizations uh, during the course of the academic year since the pandemic started amongst our students. Uh, they were all brief and turned out you know, uh, without long-term uh, adverse consequences. So uh, we'll be ready, uh, but unless uh, it turns out that the virus mutates in a way that it becomes resistant to the vaccines that are being delivered now, I don't think that's gonna be a major issue. I think it's extremely unlikely that we're gonna have to do a temporary shutdown like several times during the year, many universities, including us had to do. Yeah, I agree. I think that hopefully COVID is going to kind of move to the back <laughs> where it's not what we're thinking about all the time and we can focus on other health issues, but it will be there. Uh, question for Susan, uh, Provost Collins, when will campus tours resume? So we can't say exactly when uh, the in-person campus tours will resume, but again, as conditions improve, we certainly look forward to having them resume, probably starting with smaller groups. I will say that, of course, there is a virtual tour that's available. There's also a really uh, nice um, and engaging self-guided tour that's available on our website. So if you do come to campus, um, I encourage you strongly to take advantage of that self-guided tour um, in the interim because uh, we're not sure exactly when we'll be able to resume the in-person group tours. Great, another question for Provost Collins, when would registration open for fall for incoming first year students? So the registration, class registration for incoming students is actually done as part of the orientation. Uh, and a key part of the orientation, of course, is for a meeting and discussion with the academic advisor. And it's after that engagement that um, you would be able to begin registering for classes for the fall. And, and that's a really important part of the orientation process. And the academic advisors are looking forward to uh, interacting with you and engaging and helping you to make those selections. Uh, and so again, the, the registration is part of that orientation process. Great, and uh, I'm gonna give one last question to Provost Collins and I will just say the questions that are, that are posed that we, we don't get to, we will review them and we'll put answers up for as many of them as possible. Uh, for Provost Collins, are there any restrictions in international students to get involved with undergraduate research opportunities? So are we welcome having our international students involved in the wide range of research opportunities that I described before? And again, just wanted to put in another plug to our international students, but all of our students uh, to consider taking advantage of the wide range of opportunities to really expand the breadth of your educational experience here at the University of Michigan. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to President Schlissel to, to help close us out. So thanks very much, Preeti. And I just wanna reiterate, we, we got in during the time we were together, 144 questions. Uh, we barely were able to touch on many of them. We, we picked big buckets of questions, uh, but uh, we will uh, put up on a website uh, answers to as many of these as we can. And we'll send out a link to that website to everybody who registered for today's uh, uh, session. So um, please don't be too frustrated if we didn't get to your question. There are lots and lots of questions. But look, you know, we really appreciate your interest and engagement with the university. Uh, I have not been on a campus, and uh, I've been an educator my entire life, uh, that's more filled with energy and joy uh, and enthusiasm than the University of Michigan, at the very least before COVID, and I'm 100% certain uh, after uh, COVID is in the rearview mirror. Uh, the fall will be a transition next winter, a year from the winter semester, starting in the 2022, overwhelmingly likely to be a very normal semester at the University of Michigan with hundreds of activities for students to participate in, sporting events. I want another trip to the Final Four for men's basketball, and I want the first trip for women's basketball. You know, football in the big house is a once in a lifetime. It's an unbelievable experience. Uh, Ann Arbor has got to be America's greatest college town. Buy a warm winter coat if you're from another part of the country and be prepared to go blue. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, thanks to my colleagues for helping, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all on campus in the fall. Thank you very much. Good evening. Stay healthy.